Hi, welcome to Big Buzz TV. This is my review on the i3 and why after one year it is a fantastic car but I'm really really sad and I'll tell you why I'm so sad later on. But here we are, anyway, we're at Clununda. Why an electric car? Well, we couldn't afford the full set of solar panels, but obviously, yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? There's the car, there's your oil well. So, yeah, it's quite simple. And, oh, we've got a wind turbine as well, actually. So, again, it's a sort of a bit of a no-brainer. Yeah, basically, we find it extremely practical. It is a small car, and obviously because it's rear-engined, it's got a, a sort of sort of platform here and it doesn't go down so it's slightly smaller inside than the Zoe we had so as I was saying the obvious thing is solar panels charging you can hear it now light makes electricity it's it's so simple isn't it we love it basically and uh, unlock that this comes out very similar to your iPhone. I throw it there. I don't know what the hassle is. It's a lot better than going to a toxic station. Put that plasticky thing in there and we close it. Right, now I close this. Oh, I put my work boots in. Working on Tidemoo, the project Save the World. Save the World, I did need an electric car, obviously. Right, so we'll go off and we'll go up the road. Oh. Matt. My wife seems to have very short legs, which is weird because she's about the same height as me. Never worked that one out. Uh, the first thing you've got to do is put your safety belt on, because being a German car, it is obsessed with telling you what to do, and it'll tell me to put this on. We opted for the blue ones, which are now dirty, but uh, I just love the blue. Don't know why. Right, okay, so we switch on. Fantastic. It's the future, and... And I think I will safely say you will not be disappointed. Really won't be disappointed. Put it into drive and then we go. Put the horns out. I just love playing with those horns. Buzz. Okay, well that doesn't seem to do anything at all, but it seems to remind me who I am. Re resume route guidance. Hang on. I think what we will do is stop. Now, um, 80s music. Not sure. Yeah, it's a bit me, isn't it? Now more 70s music. There's the old technology, the old Land Rover. Now, strangely, I will take the i3 to the Land Rover. And this is why I am upset and at the same time sad. Because of the Land Rover and because of the i3. And it's a bit weird, but here we go. And here's Blossom, the Land Rover. She's got her own name because she's 50 years old and quite frankly is part of the family for me. Right. So here's the future. It's no doubt it's brilliant. Now we go to the past, but there's a lot of connections between this, this old clunker, with its old toxic lump, and this, with its little electric motor. The main thing is their utility vehicles. This one has a chassis. As you can see, and I've been underneath there, and I've welded every single inch of it. I promise you, I know that chassis inside out. This has a chassis we can't see, because it's actually flat underneath. However, it has, underneath here, a box section chassis. So underneath there, there is a box section. On top of that, they've bolted the tub. Now, this is what makes me sad. There most probably will not be a car like this for a while, this is carbon fibre, so you sit in a carbon fibre tub. This easily could be made from hemp. In fact, I think there is quite a lot of hemp used in this car. Hemp is stronger, and the material for the future, and natural resins. Also, which people tend to neglect to say about the BMW i3, call me a bit of an anorak, but actually they haven't used chemicals in this, which is quite unique. Most of this car, and this one, were cold done. So the chassis was printed out on the Land Rover in bits, and then actually just welded together. This was sort of squashed out in aluminium and then welded together. That was a more or less all the welding. The rest of it then was done using cold production. The manufacturing of vehicles is what is destroying our planet. So if in fact you 
manufacture them using very little engine. And this car, and why I bought it, was because it was the first car that I know of, or maybe the second after Tesla, where the factory is carbon neutral. So this car is a car that is made in a factory which uses renewable energy. Now you think about it. You think about it. Electric, making energy at home. A car, renewable energy, made in a factory. Now, if you can do that using sustainable resources, and they have done a lot of work here, this is the shavings of the carbon fibre roof and the, this. So they actually they use the waste material, which I just find brilliant. All this is made from old bottle tops and the seats. That's quite common in some of the cars now, but this one they've gone that extra bit further because this car and the I programme was called the Intelligent Programme, believe it or not. And so when you start putting the links together, that is why we love the i3. Sadly, because we are still using the old frame of capitalism, it's unlikely BMW are going to make a car for the people as well as this. I think the next one's going to be tin. It's going to be compromised. They've got to make money. And I don't believe they're making money on this one. Uh, 30,000, but I just don't think they are. Oh, by the way, one reviewer, um, you keep the cables in the front there. I'll open the front up. As I said, the funny thing is with these suicide doors, we have managed to jam three of us in here, three bikes, three folding bikes, gone all the way to uh, Barton-on-Sea in Winchester, 200 miles, one charge, on the motorway, 70 miles an hour. <laughs> we find it brilliant. That's a, this is the 33 kilowatt. It is perfectly usable. I can promise you that. I think that what the Toxic Boys have been telling you is rubbish. Right, so James Bond. Right, OK, when we open this up, Yes, and there's where the cables are kept. Now, I'd just like to say to the woman who did the i3 test, obviously she was so in-depth that she forgot to say where the cables were kept because she didn't know she stuffed them in the boot, of all things. But anyway, so that's where the cables are kept. And you can jam some other bits in there. It's amazing what stuff you can jam into this car. OK, so carbon fibre could be hemp. That is what I'd like to see BMW is using hemp, grown perhaps locally, we were even thinking about, this is where we live by the way, this is Green Desert. Uh, the National Trust have actually agreed with us, finally, that the people who have been mowing, they can't mow this bit, they're going to make it into a meadow, hay meadow. We had to sacrifice our benches because they want to make it suburban. We've got a few things to overcome. One of them is narrow-mindedness, but then we'll talk about that over the years. Anyway, we'll go back to the BMW and why it is so good and over the year I've been extremely impressed with it. Stick that in there, put the belt on because the little warning buzzer will come on and it's really irritating and they've managed to, that really irritates me. I always hate being told what to do. I think if I want to kill myself I'll do it, thank you. Right, and we're ready to go and put it into gear, might help. That's it, and then off we go. And yes, it flies. It. Oh, whoops, you can't have to just watch it. Actually, I don't want to kill John Deason. He's a very decent man, wouldn't want to kill him. Um, so yeah, it goes. So really, the BMW is fantastic. And I wish BMW, and I hope that they carry on making these fine cars. But I think we do have one big thing, and that's where Berzoff Toxic comes in, the framework and capitalism. I don't think cars make money, to be honest. I think you get the million mile car, I think we're talking about, and I know that technology's been around. So now we just have to make this car last as long as the Land Rover, which it can do. I could work on this car. It is actually nuts and bolts. That's the funny thing about it. I know we're not sort of told about these things because we're sort of kept in the dark. A racist once said to me, and he, he really is, it was a racist, but he said one thing. He said, hey, Buzz. We're like mushrooms. We're kept in the dark and fed bullshit. And he, he had it right. <laughs> and uh, I think that is something when it comes to transport. Uh, so, we, yeah, it's to do with the market forces. So the i3, fantastic. Uh, I can't really say anything more than that, other than we've really enjoyed it. I'm going off down to Taude Moon now, so I'll see you later on. But, the yeah, not as expensive to buy as you might think. In fact, the, the odd thing about it is that, yeah, it, uh, if you bought a second-hand toxic heap of crap, burnt a fuel tank, let's say, a week, 
Uh, I just can't hit That's just absolutely amazing, isn't it? It really does. It, it's just fun. Electric cars are fun, and uh, <laughs> no doubt about that. And it, just, it makes that whir noise. It just sounds so futuristic. I've driven lots of cars, uh, and uh, this is one of the best ones I've ever driven. And, and that includes a Rolls Royce, I have to say, the 1970s Rolls Royce, which was okay, but not a patch on this. So, coming back, yeah, so the i3 electric cars, not as expensive you might think. So, yeah, have a look at them. I really think the Zoe's are coming in really cheap now, second hand. It's worth ditching your, your, your toxic, petrol, crappy, stinky thing, and noisy, chattery gear stick. It doesn't have a gear stick. That's so advanced, isn't it? You don't have to wiggle that thing every five minutes. I love the Land Rover. If you are going to have a classic thing, have a old Land Rover. It's got a big old gear stick. And you spend your whole time whacking it in from one gear to the next, and it's fun. And if you run it on vegetable, it's carbon neutral. But don't use it as a daily vehicle, because quite frankly, it is a bit stupid. But then that's the thing about life. It is a bit stupid. Whoops. I can just shoot up there. See, that's brilliant, isn't it? So, okay, uh, yeah, so it's affordable, it's fun, go and get, not necessarily an i3, but any electric car is good, because as long as we get off toxic, remember, and this is something which people forget, and even my green friends forget this, when you fill it up with toxic fuel once a week, it's almost like burning this battery, so it's like getting this battery and burning it, now would you do that? You don't have to on the BMW. I don't get out and burn this battery. Okay, it would be about four tankfuls, this battery. Weighs about the equivalent of four full tanks, let's say. So the guess. That means after four weeks... Now, I'm entering the main road. Not, not a main road, but I think I'd better stop here. Um, otherwise, somebody will say, Oh, you're driving with the phone in your hand. Oh, active. That's I love this. So you just press that. By the way, it's got apps. You just know everything what happens. You can park the car up. And you can talk to it if you're, you're lonely. Uh, so yeah so one the i3 is actually quite extremely cheap to run uh, surprisingly it's also a fantastically thought out car so well well done BMW I just think you've got to ditch the tin ones I know it's difficult I know you may have to give up your your company and, I, and that's a, sounds a strange thing I would say BMW go non-profit. I know it sounds a bit weird. It's owned by a lady. And I, I urge her to go non-profit. Because we've got a planet to save, we can still make them. We can still sell them. We can still lease them. Uh, but we've got to think about the capitalism. And we've got to stop making inferior shite simply because you've got to buy the next one. And that's what Ford did. Fordism, it's called. If you don't believe me, just go to Ford and, you know, look up Henry Ford and Fordism. We did that in art school. So... Yeah, it's affordable, it's fun, it's compact. It goes down the motor at 70. It does seem to lose... It's weird, weird. It does 70 fine. We find if you do 75, which you shouldn't do, it starts to lose quite a bit of power. Doing 80, the battery starts to get really hit badly. But then, actually, that is completely illegal. She will do up to 90 very happily. And then I think she's restricted at 95 or something. I don't know, because I've only ever done up to 90 in it. Uh, overtaking, obviously. So, one year on, brilliant car. The Zoe was good, but this is just another dimension. There's the Priscilla Mountains. Yeah, well done, BMW. I think, I haven't driven a Tesla, I sat in Teslas. The thing about Teslas, they all seem really big and massive. And I, I, The i3 looks good, but it's a, it's a tin box. It, it's inferior to this. I hate to say it, the i3 is better than the Tesla Model 3. Uh, I wish they'd put, now this is the bit which is a bit technical, I wish they'd put a, uh, they've got a motor in the back, like a Porsche, right? If they put a motor in the front, now there's lots of room underneath here, because I've looked, there's nothing there, it's BMW, nothing there. You put two motors in this, this thing would out-accelerate a Tesla. I would say it would be on par with a Tesla sports car, 0-60 to in one second. Now that would be crazy, and it'd be silly, and it would be ridiculous, but BMW, do it. You won't do it because your tin boxes that you're selling to people and ripping them off with would make them look silly, because they are silly anyway. And after you... I, I've been in a few tin box Teslas, uh, sorry, tin box BMWs after this, and I, all of them seem like, okay, looks a little bit old-fashioned here, mate. Uh, yeah, so 
it is the future, it is advanced. They tend not to tell people because I don't think they're making money. That's my theory on it. But they are making some supercars, which I think they're going to use this technology for. OK, so yeah, coming back down to burning the, the fuel tank. So basically here, we don't have a fuel tank. Electricity, you can't see, you can't touch, but it can kill you. So, ah, I'm just joking. Um, so that's the beauty of it. You can make it from our environment all around us, including the sea, which is perhaps over there, if you can see it. Well, there's a windmill somewhere there. Windmills are very rare things, but they do make, can make hydrogen. Oh, there's a big one down there, actually. So it's combining renewable energy, local energy production, also a grid tie-in and microgrids powering electric cars with charge points. Money, well, yeah, it'll be non-profit, obviously. Oil companies won't exist, so I call them toxic companies. Call them toxic. We need to ban them straight away. They are what they are. I've been running some toxic fuel. It stinks. It's horrible in the Land Rover, sadly, because for, I will go into the vegetable oil thing later on with the Land Rover. And so if you get a battery, it lasts 10 years. It is 98% recoverable, 98% recoverable. Now, when you burn your fuel tank, how much of that fuel are you going to recover at the end of the day? None. That's why Toxic love it, because they're going to sell you the next, what is equivalent to a battery. So what happens? It goes up there. It also goes into the atmosphere. It goes in to us, believe it or not. Now, I knew about this in the 1980s when I spoke to a chemist about supposedly green fuel. And I, he said, no, Buzz, it's one toxic for another. There's a toxic car coming now. Listen to it. You can hear it. You can hear it. What is it? It's a motorbike, I think. Now, I love motorbikes. Run it on renewable energy. It's fun, but it is classic. Oh, no, it's, a, it's an old taxi. Oh, no, there is a motorbike behind the taxi. Okay. Both of them are burning shit. And inefficient. Fun, but classic. So going into the future with hover cars or whatever is, no, you will not burn a tax battery a week, burn a taxi a week, uh, as those people are. They're burning through a literally equivalent of a battery a day or a week. That is craziness. And yet, I've heard so much negativity about cars, BMW i3s, about electric cars. You've heard it most probably. Now it's time to put all that to bed. No, we are now on the attack. It's the toxic car that's the problem. That's the one that's killing us. So that's the one that only runs 30% efficiency, not 90, high 90s. I think some of these run efficient. And that means you can make the energy at home as well. So, uh, yeah, I, any answers or any questions about the i3? We find it fantastic. It's practical. It's fun. I think it's beautiful. It, yeah, okay. I think I would say I love the side profile, but I would smooth it off a bit. The original concept was that they had this all smoothed. And it just looked so cool. Instead, they made it look a bit gawky, a little bit like me with a, a big hooter and large, uh, large cheekbones. So I, I, yeah. But saying that, it's a small thing. And I do, I love the glass thing. But I'm not sure it might be a bit heavy. You know, I'm not sure. But I do like the lights and the glass thing on the back there. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So it's buzz off toxic. Remember, 24-hour security is absolutely important nowadays because there's some really bad people out there and they're coming to kill you. Okay, so remember that. Now, I'm only joking. Most human beings are actually okay. We're fed scariness. Yes, it is scariness. We are going to die. Oh, God, plastic. Okay, I better get going. Ah, I, I, I pick up the bloody stuff and it just appears. Right, okay, so I love you. The i3, I'm just going to go do some more careful driving within the speed limits, obviously, which I do, because they keep have speed cameras down there. Last look at it. It's fantastic. It is the future. I just hopefully the next ones are going to be as good as this. And as you can see, we don't look after it. We treat it like an old bin. I, I don't think it's well as made as the Land Rover. I don't think in 50 years time it's going to look as good as the Land Rover. The Land Rover just looks like an old worn country cottage inside. We'll do a review on the Land Rover later on. But I do need to get that running on uh, straight vegetable oil. And then we can talk about carbon neutral and big particulates and small particulates and how the small particulates give you cancer. Right, that's going to be a jolly show, isn't it? Anyway, buzz off Toxic. Remember to subscribe, tell people about it. That's my review on the i3. Go and buy one before they make a crap car and then try and sell that to you and talk your bullshit. Oh, the BMW do talk the bull, I have to say. But saying that, they're really nice as well. They even made me vegan coffee. 
well, I had to introduce them to vegan coffee, then they made it to me. So they're getting there, that's the salespeople. Okay, there's somebody jogging, that's good, because that's even better than this. Right, love you, bye. That was a broadcast brought to you by Big Buzz and Buzz Off Toxic.